Well, here we are. We've made it to Grand Junction, but um, our camper hasn't quite gotten there. I'm actually being very serious right now. I think we should very seriously consider trading this in and buying a truck. Well, let's um, start with where we are right now. We're Brittany and Nick, and these are our two kids, Olivia and Everett. We used to do most of our traveling on airplanes, but 2020 has kept us on the ground. So we thought, what a better time to explore the US. We bought a tiny RV. Oh, look at that. And took off with Nana, Pops, and Uncle Dylan. And now, we're headed west to see what it's like living in a tiny home on wheels. And living in our own bubble. Our car has broken down in the middle of the road. Luckily, we made it to the campground, but um, we didn't make it to the campsite, and our car is stuck, and we have no idea what's wrong with it. And we're in the middle of Colorado. Here we are at the entrance, at the stop sign where you're supposed to check in, and here's our campsite. But we have no way of getting to it because um, our car won't start. Let me back up a little bit. So, we were driving along from Heber City, just outside Park City, Utah, to Grand Junction, which was the goal for tonight. Um, in the middle of nowhere, right before the Colorado state line, we started getting all these warning signs on our car, lights that were coming on, hill assist, and something about traction control. I don't even know what they all are, but um, we got warnings and we didn't stop. We kept going because we were close enough that we thought we could make it there and then check things out. Well, we did. We made it there. And then our car stopped working. We don't know how we're going to get into our parking spot. We don't know if our car is going to be able to tow anything for the rest of the trip or for how long this is going to take or what the fix is going to be. So that's where we're at right now. I'm actually being very serious right now. I think we should very seriously consider trading this in and buying a truck. I'm being utterly, completely serious. That last hour was the worst drive of my life. I was terrified. Meanwhile, free spirit Olivia has already uh, taken her shoes and socks off and made herself at home. On the plus side, we've made it 16 days, and this is the first car issue that we've had. But we are just about as far west as um, we're planning to go from home, so that makes this difficult. Um, Nick just had one of the worst drives of his life, he said, and so I feel, I feel bad for him because he... He's taking it pretty tough right now. And I don't think he wants to drive any of the rest of the way, and we're only halfway through, so. Okay, there's our car, guys. There's Nick, so he must have gotten the steering to work somehow. Well, that's where we were parked, and our camper's no longer here, so I guess we've gotten it out of its spot. And um, now I'm just gonna go see where it is. Right there, it looks like is our spot. They're calling in now. Stop. We also have a mad four-year-old. Conveniently for us, the Ford dealership that's located about seven miles from here is closed. So Nick is trying to chat with the Ford maintenance team to see what our issue might be. Little ones are starting to get a little bit tired. We still gotta get dinner. That was quite a fiasco. I don't even know where to begin. I'm so frustrated right now. Yeah. 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 At least somebody's in a good mood. Let's just deal with this tomorrow. Here I am, here I am. Where oh, oh. 
Yep, we're doing homework. Yep, we're doing homework. Uh-oh. All right, good job. Nailed it. Yes. I nailed it. Yes. It's morning, and I've had nothing to do but stew on this. So we are calling Ford, calling the dealer that we bought it from. The Ford dealership here in Grand Junction said they can get us in on the 15th. That's pretty exciting. Well, they don't know what date it is now. So. <laughs> it's October 2nd. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to try to figure out this as we go along and try to figure out how we don't have to be stuck at KOA. Oh, wait. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. All right. All right. Let us know. How'd it go? <laughs> I mean, you know, one step at a time. They got us into the dealership so we can take it over now. And they're going to get us a loaner so that we will have a car. Um, and hopefully by the time we leave it'll be fixed. We can revisit the whole wanting to return the car and who's going to pay for it, but let's just first get the car to a place where we can have options. Well that's one way to clean out your car. After a bit of a white knuckle drive we made it to the Ford dealership, so we're going to talk to them, see what they can do for us to get us back on the road. The clock is on, it's Friday afternoon, we're supposed to be out of here by Wednesday morning. It's Monday morning and today is the day that we take our car into the shop to see what's wrong with it. From all the Googling that we've done, it appears that it's a pretty common problem with Fords and Ford Explorers especially. So it comes with the territory of knowing you're going on a road trip and things happen. Um, Nick took the car in this morning, so now we're just waiting on a call to see where we go from here. Okay. Okay, that's probably about what we expected. But you think you can have it and get it tomorrow? So, uh, you want the good news or the bad news? I always want the bad news first, but I only want there to be good news. <laughs> well, the good news is that we'll be up and running hopefully by tomorrow. We'll tomorrow have a car night. tomorrow? Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. It'll only cost us 2400 bucks. Our car broke down last Friday. It is now Tuesday. And here we are at the repair shop. I am standing next to what I can only hope is a completely functional car. Thank you fine people at Scotty's repair shop. We would not have been able to get back on the road without you. It turned out it was a steering rack that we needed replaced, which apparently is fairly common with Ford vehicles. So it's kind of an expensive fix, but you fix it and you move on. Here goes nothing. Man. Turn it on and see if it works. <laughs> oh, right. Our door ajar. Oh, no warning labels. This is just so nice. Where were we at? It was $25.90 to get it fixed. They had to replace the steering rack, realign the front tires, because those got all out of whack in our driving, apparently. And that's nothing to mess around with. When it says you've lost power steering, go directly to the shop. Do not pass go. Do not collect 200. Um, in fact, pay 2200. So we did everything right. Everything we could have done. Right? We we took the car to have it inspected before the trip, and we had it serviced, and we had the transmission looked at, and brakes, and so on and so forth. We did everything we could do. And you know, when you go on a road trip like that, there's always gonna be risk. And we got stupid unlucky. There's no way we could have prepared for it. We could have very easily let it ruin our weekend, but um, you know, I think Brittany and I are very good at expecting the unexpected. And as they say on Big my Brother, Julie, they, my girl Julie they, Chen, expect yep. the unexpected. And so you know, we can kind of put that to the back burner. We've been in positions before where we've had to spend a lot of money to get out of it, and it sucks at the time. But I guess we'll get a good story out of it maybe if you guys like this video i hope you do that being said we were always intending to show you what it's like towing a trailer and all the fun that goes into it because it's a whole process in itself so it just so happens that this video seems to be the perfect spot to do that since we're already on the topic of cars 
So we are gonna show you as we go through to, from the west side of Colorado to the east side, that is probably our most, what would you call it? Strenuous. Strenuous, challenging, difficult, whatever word you wanna use, part of our drive. So that seems like the perfect opportunity to put Nick on the spot and see how he does. You up for the challenge? Sure am. We'll see you in exactly two days. After a couple days break, we are back. And we've saved our towing experience for the big show. The big show. Quite possibly the most challenging drive on this month long journey. We got everything. We got hills. We got curves. We got long distance. It's going to be exciting. Oh, we got tunnels too. We have a little monitor that tells us how hard the car is working. And if it stays over a certain level, then we'll pull over and let it rest for a while. We already had one bad thing happen to this little this little gal here. We don't need so another. <laughs> we don't need another. The first thing to keep in mind when you're towing over mountains, especially at high altitude, we use premium gas. We don't need to. It's a little bit more expensive, but it certainly helps out. It helps the engine perform a lot better. One thing that has been super helpful is having this little book because it tells you all of the difficult roads along your journey. So this is the this is the west one. I think there's an east one too. But here we are in Colorado. So we are just past Glenwood Springs right there, and we are going on 70. And so you'll see the first one, number 41 in this book, right after Vail. So we keep talking about percent grades and what. What does that actually mean? So this one's fun. It's a little bit of actual, like, you know, math. So basically what it means is however many feet you're going up in elevation divided by the distance you're traveling forward. So if you think about it in its simplest terms, if you drive 100 feet forward, that percent grade is how many feet you climb in elevation. So a 7% grade means that for every 100 feet traveled, you go up 7 feet. It's an interesting one, huh? The other cool thing about the drive that we're doing today is that it's widely regarded as one of the most beautiful scenic drives you can take across the country. We're driving from west to east throughout Colorado on I-70, and we have mountains all around us, the Colorado River is running right by us, the trees are turning into yellow colors because it's fall. It's gorgeous. We just crossed into Vail, which means that we are about to start the ascent through the Vail Pass. We've started with the curves and a little bit uphill. I think we're at like 8,000 feet, 8,800 feet right now. The top is a little over 10,000. The bottom right, our transmission fluid temperature is at 242. Normally speaking, when you're driving, you don't want it over, you know, 220. Ideally, it's around 200. We, um, we're towing. And so we're working the engine hard. Um, we don't want this sustained. And so if it starts getting into the 250s or you know even like 260, we'll probably stop and let it cool down. We're going through the city of Vail right now. I have to say it is so cute and charming looking and we are definitely gonna have to make a return trip and go here because it looks amazing and we just have to stare at it from the side of the road. Over. I'm just gonna chill for a minute. <laughs> Let the old engine cool down a little bit. Harry, we've reached the top. It's actually that wasn't too terrible. I mean, the car got warm, and out of an abundance of caution, we stopped for about five minutes because I saw a safe place to pull off. 10,600 feet, and now is the fun part. Now's the downhill. This is where we sing. See you on the other side. How are your brakes? My brakes? My brakes are good. They just had them looked at in the shop a few days ago, so we good, fam. And that section is all sand, which stops trucks that have lost their brakes. That is a long day of driving. Miles wise, from where we went, it was not that far. But we did Vail Pass and the Eisenhower Tunnel, and that is a lot of work for this little SUV, especially 
at its top of its capacity. The situation was not great. We weren't thrilled, still aren't thrilled, but we're not gonna let it bother us. I mean, it is what it is, as they say. We have to deal with Ford still. They were less than helpful, but Scotty's, they hooked us up, they helped us out. It was expensive, <laughs> but we're on the road and we're thrilled about that. If anything, this whole trip has made us really consider, do we maybe want a truck and potentially a bigger trailer? Pops, you're not right. That's not, stop when you're thinking about that. Anyway, my dad thinks that we all we just want to do is upgrade. We have a whole rest of our trip coming up and you can look forward to arches. And we got a little bit of tidbits on how to work from home from a trailer, you know, with kids running around. So that'll be neat. And make sure you check out our website. We have a whole bunch of decorating tips and tips and tricks on trailer life in general. So that's familyonstandby.com. Make sure you visit that and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a good week.